The other day I encountered the double drive through at Chick-fil-A, but it was different. Both drive throughs weren't for everybody. Let's discuss this today. My goal is to help, to help restaurant owners finally get to where they want to go. But more than that, my goal is to find entrepreneurs within that segment that actually know what it means to hustle. That's my goal. Come on the journey with me. Restaurant Marketing Secrets, episode 714. I'm your host, Matt Plapp, and today we're talking about my recent experience at Chick-fil-A. The other night, I pull up to grab dinner for me and my wife, and there's the two drive throughs like normal, but one has a crazy line and the other one has nobody in it. And of course, I'm intrigued, but I also can figure out, okay, maybe it's closed, something's wrong. What was wrong is that they changed it. The left drive through is only for mobile order pickup now. The right is through traditional drive through So I popped in the traditional drive through because I don't have the Chick-fil-A app, but I quickly downloaded it. I ordered our meals. I pulled over to the left because you could cut through the little middle part. I scanned the QR code. I cut about 10 cars, got up within two cars of the window, got my food, and left. The next day, Driving down the road right next to Chick-fil-A, looking for something really quick with some protein. I had like five minutes to kill, and I'm like, okay, let's try this thing again. Pull up, order my chicken sandwich, scan the code, grab it, and go. I got to say, it's pretty wild to see the technology, to see the advancements, to see what these big brands can get away with. Now, I will say this. There's not very many independents doing anything in the drive through world. Above my pay grade, not really sure why people aren't recreating the drive through experience. Maybe they feel the competition between McDonald's and Wendy's and Burger King and Taco Bell and Chick-fil-A is too much and there's more space in the dine-in. I don't know. I read a book the other day where the author talked about the best opportunities are many times where people are doing it at a high level. So maybe there is a chance for a local mom and pop drive through chain, but I don't see them very often. And so... We don't see many drive throughs Like I can't count on my hand the number of clients I know that have drive throughs like a Chick-fil-A or McDonald's do. Now, a lot of you have drive-up windows to pick up orders, but traditional drive through is not really something we see a lot of our clients doing. So I don't have much experience in that part of the world. But when I look at what Chick-fil-A did here, it's freaking genius. Yes, they have the ultimate buy-in when it comes to brand experience, kind of like Starbucks, Dunkin', and Chipotle. They have a massive following, they have huge brand equity, and they have people willing to download the app. Now, I've been eating at Chick-fil-A since college, and it never occurred to me to get their app because I'm not an app guy. I never saw the need to get the app. I don't even have Better Blends app, which is a place I eat at five to six times a week. Don't ask me why. I just do not gravitate towards apps. But I felt the need to get it on this one. And my history with Chick-fil-A goes way back. We had one in my college dorm when they were a nobody brand as compared to what they are today. Back then, I believe they were just in malls, airports, and college campuses slash food courts. Today, of course, they're everywhere. And that everywhere has happened in the last 15 to 20 years. But I think it shows you in marketing what you can get away with when you have the ultimate consumer buy-in. Because if most restaurants tried what Chick-fil-A did here with this double drive through and with the app only ordering the skip the line, kind of like the amusement park rides, they wouldn't succeed because there's not enough people using the app and hell, there's not enough people in your damn drive through Most restaurants are trying to find people to put at the tables every single day. Chick-fil-A is trying to find ways to make it quicker because their table turns, aka their drive through is insane. In the description of this podcast, I said, I'm not really quite sure how this applies to you. I wrote a blog post the other day hinting the same thing, but now I know how it applies as I talk this out with you. It shows the power of brand. It shows what you can get away with when you have massive consumer adoption. Now, granted, Chick-fil-A is a national brand with billions of dollars every year going to support that brand. You and I don't have that, but you can get it on a smaller level. So I want you to think about what Chick-fil-A has done the last 20 years and what you could do the next 20 years in your community. Do you want to go to every community around the country? Probably not. But what if you had that level of domination in your own backyard? 
It's not going to happen from next week, next month, next year. It's going to happen over the next five to 10 years. That market domination is available to you and I. I see clients doing it like Little Italy, like Louis Waffle House, like Wooden Paddle. They are grabbing that level of domination in their two to five mile radius around their store. But they're putting in a lot of branding and a lot of organic marketing right now that isn't paying off right now, but it's paying off in the future. So ask yourself, are you doing things right now only to benefit today? Or are you doing things to benefit not only today, but next year and the year after that? See you later. And we had to invest a lot of money to bring our editing in-house at our HQ in Northern Kentucky. Number seven, the TNT BLT. That right there, my friends, is what I love about what we do. This owner's got a story about that sandwich, and it ties to a customer in the local community. That is what it's all about. That sandwich was named by one of his customers. The idea came up by one of his customers. And here it is on the menu. Those are reasons people want to support your restaurant. Number eight, Dave brings up his family, his wife's support, you know, how one of his chefs has been with him forever. That is the stuff that really separates you, again, from those big chains. And last but not least, the food looked amazing. Just everything in there was stuff that you'd want to eat on a weekly basis. And that's one of our criteria. We have 10 criteria we check off, zero to three. Restaurants have to rank above 23 in order to have that conversation. And we look at that, one of the items is, okay, 
one through nine, we've got reviews, their online presence, what the restaurant looks like, it's locally owned. Is this a place you would want to eat at every single week? Now, I guess I'll go to one more, last but not least, because we talked about the stats. At the time that I wrote this blog a few days ago, the episode was at 6,100 views. It had been live for about 12 hours. On their Facebook page, 6,100 views. Again, these are going to be local views. These aren't national views. People from Kentucky aren't watching an episode there. Maybe a few, but not many. It's kind of the opposite of a national show on cable. They're getting a ton of people nationwide, a few locally. We're getting a ton of people locally, a few nationwide. But this was at 6,100 views, 60 shares, 25 comments, 128 likes. Now, I'm going to click it and go to the page now and see what it is at right now. So I can stop it before it plays and blurs my ears out here. Okay, the episode now is at 8,000 views a few days later. And that was not showing me the shares. Let me go through the restaurant and look. That's the best place. Look on their page, which is even cooler, by the way. I'm on the restaurant's Facebook page. That's where the attention is going because we want the restaurant to get the attention, not America's best restaurants. I do not give a shit about my brand getting attention from the consumers. I want the restaurant to win which is why it's broadcast on their channel where they own it. They can run all the time. 67 shares, 28 comments, 143 reactions, and over almost 8,000 views. So the stats in the last couple days have gone up pretty solid. And what we hope to do is have these go up every week, every month, and have some continual exposure for your restaurant with this. One of the things we're actually rolling out here in the next couple days that we're calling the ABR post episode marketing package. We've had restaurant owners come back to us and go, Matt, my episode killed it for this amount of time. How do we keep it going? How do we get some rerun out of this? And we know how to do it. And we assumed that some of the restaurants would do it on their own. And they're like, hey, we're steak, pizza, burger people. We're not marketing people. We need your help with that. So that's coming out. So if you're a past visit, we've got a product coming out that's really inexpensive that's going to let us help you run ads to these to attract local views on autopilot on repeat over the next 6, 12, 18 months. So that my friends is America's Best Restaurants, americasbestrestaurants.com and the ABR Roadshow and everything that's going to be encapsulated in there. Again, go check out our vivid vision at mattplapp.live/vv. I'll talk to you tomorrow.